Kirby was known as the king of comics, and for no small reason. Along with Stan Lee, Kirby was responsible for a large amount of the characters that many fans recognize from today's films. This is in addition to the upcoming Eternals from Marvel or the impending New Gods film in the works from DC. With that in mind, we will work today from the genius that was Jack Kirby. Okay, so I said we're going to be doing some work on a Jack Kirby, Kirby pencil drawing. And I found online a one that he did a Thor. So we're going to go ahead and import that drawing. Uh, and <clears throat> once we import it, we're going to go ahead and resize it to fit into our space. Once we do that, then we're also going to convert it to photo blue. Uh, and then also we're going to lock it down. What this will do is we'll have our three layers we'll have our ink layer our color layer and then the main layer which we just locked down which was Jack's pencils okay so to start out on the inking of this we're going to proceed as if that you know instead of having my tablet and pen that say that all I had initially was my mouse uh, so if anyone has ever tried to draw with a mouse that's difficult if not impossible I guess there are some really skilled people who have learned to do it but I'm not one of those so uh, instead of that though we're going to be using the curve tool here and uh, what it will allow us to do is to uh, do these external ink lines with quite a bit of control and uh, you know and way better than I could ever hope to do this with the mouse on its own uh, and basically all you'll do on these curves is you'll draw a line, you know, a straight line from point A to point B. And then after you let go of the mouse, you'll bend the line, take the mouse to the center of the line and bend it however you want to, to make it fit the contours of the line you're trying to create. Uh, once you get used to it, like I said, it's actually pretty simple and actually pretty quick. Uh, as far as thickness of line, I mean, you have multiple choices. You can make it really thin, really thick. Uh, 20 is generally the standard size that I use as far as for the ink lines. And uh, like I said, all I'm doing here is following the contours of uh, Thor's boot here. Now this is classic Thor, you know, as drawn by Jack Kirby. So that means you're going to have the yellow boots, the blue tights, the blue trunks, uh, the silver winged helmet, uh, the red cape. Uh, now, as you know, as time has passed, the, the character of Thor has his costume has changed quite a bit, and for that matter, the, the title has changed hands to different people quite a bit. But from this particular drawing, this is cl the classic original Ch Kirby version, so we're gonna that's what we're gonna be working with here. Uh, okay, so I'm just taking the curve tool and filling in the lines on his boot, and also on his leg here to get us started. Before we're gonna go ahead and select areas to. Uh, to color and shade and uh, <clears throat> like I said now you can actually you could go ahead and do the ink the entire drawing if you wanted to do that you don't have to do it segment by segment which is kind of what I'm doing uh, but I'm doing it this way basically to kind of reiterate the the not only the ink part of this but also the coloring techniques that we talked about and the general grievous uh, lesson that I last did uh, so I'm kind of combining both of those uh, lessons here in one uh, so anyway so we uh, got the basic boot lined out so now we're just going to select the areas we're going to color in this case we're going to just use black so I'll color in the top of the boot there in black and also the stripes uh, going across to his calf here, we're going to also do those in black. See now, in this particular case, you actually, you could do this, the top of his boot and those stripes, either on the ink layer or the color layer, it doesn't really matter. Now on the coloring of the boot, of course, we're going to use the color layer. Uh, so uh, we're selecting the areas that we're going to color, and we're going to change our color to a an appropriate yellow uh, and uh, I'm just trying to find one that to me looks about kind of Thor like and once I found it I'll go ahead and apply the yellow to his boot uh, 
Okay, so you notice when we lay down the color, we cover up uh, Jack's pencil lines. Uh, we'll come back to that. Uh, okay, now when I first started doing the shading, it was using working basically off the black, and I really wasn't a big fan of it. So I ended up changing it to the more a little more orange uh, feel to it. So that's why we've ended up using now for the sh for the shadows. And I'm kind of just following along, just like on the general grief thing, following along the contours where I think it, uh, the shadows need to fall. And uh, darken those up before we'll get into the uh, highlights and also into the so the soft, uh, soft highlights in the middle of the boot. Okay, so on the, the highlights here, when I get to the, actually, the foot itself, I'm kind of laying these lines down, kind of following the where the ink lines were, that, uh, or actually the pencil lines that Jack had. Uh, so I'm kind of laying those to kind of highlight when I put those in here once I finish coloring in the boot. Uh, so, yeah, that looks pretty good. So now we're going to think about doing the middle section. Okay, now that's not quite white enough. We went, let's go a little lighter. Yeah, that's a little better. Uh, so doing the highlights in the middle there and also do it here along the, the boot again following along those kind of cross-section lines we put on right, Once we get that done uh, Then we can go back and ink in the rest of the lines now When we go in to ink the rest of the lines instead of using the curve tool This is where I'm going to use my pen and I'm going to use a, a uh, Kalinsky brush. Now, th now the brush that I'm using here did not actually come with Clip Studio. Uh, actually, it's one I bought as, as a kit because uh, you can buy additional brushes and, and things uh, online that will uh, enhance your uh, your tools that you can use. So uh, I'm kind of a big fan of this Kalinsky brush because you, uh, you know I can get all kinds of different line weights on it. Uh, you know, depending on how hard I press down on my pen. On this one, I'm trying to keep just a nice uniform line. Uh, and as I said before, when we were doing General Grievous, undo is your friend. Uh, because unlike, you know, if you were doing an actual traditional uh, inking on a pencil drawing, if you make a mistake, you're, you've made a mistake. You know, unless you can white it out, there's nothing you can do to undo it. Whereas, of course, in the digital world, all you have to do is hit undo, control Z, and you you can undo any uh, horrible mistake that you've made. Uh, so anyway, so once I get my lines laid pretty much where I want, and then I can lay the color back over it, we can kind of see what that looks like. Okay, it looks pretty good. So now that we've got the boot done, we're going to go in and uh, do the leg. And now you may have noticed that... Uh, the rest of the leg there has already been, the external lines have already been inked. Uh, that's because uh, just so uh, that tends to happen when I do these recordings sometimes uh, in trying to cut down on the length of these things, I accidentally take off a section here. In this case, all I did is I took off the section where I inked the leg, but I mean, it was no, it's nothing different than how we did the boot, so it's not like you missed that much. Okay, so... Uh, I'm going in here, I laid down the blue for his uh, leg, and now I'm just going ahead and laying the uh, shadows in there. Uh, and then once I do that, lay in the highlights. Uh, except the leg is actually relatively simple with uh, just a little bit of ink detail uh, along the leg, which we'll add after once we get the color laid in here. Okay, so we go back to the ink layer, and that's when we're going to go ahead and lay these, uh, what little inking there is to be done here. We got one fairly large section on the bottom that I'm using the curve tool for, and I'll just end up filling that in black with the paintbrush. And the rest of the lines I'll use, again, my uh, pen uh, for doing that. Now, once we get to areas like uh, Thor's face, we're specifically going to use the pen uh, for details on that because drawing with the curve tool on uh, people's faces is problematic at best. Matter of fact, it's, again, just almost like using the mouse, it's almost impossible to do it correctly where uh, you get a lot better control with the pen. So that's what we're going to end up doing when we get to his face. Uh, so we're just laying in our ink lines from this point. 
Um, one other thing you can do here, and which I'm going to do my, myself here, is sometimes when you have a line that is kind of just awkward from where you're kind of where you're sitting you can always revolve your drawing to where you can get a little better feel for where you can lay the lines down and that's what i did here is i just turned the floor drawing normally i have that can map to one of the buttons on my pen uh but in this case i just used the actual revolve uh the, uh the revolve button on the menu to turn it uh okay so we add the color to after the ink thing that looking pretty good okay so we got a thor leg yeah yes okay so we're gonna go ahead and whoops uh, just a minute here i left off it's another thing when i do this uh selecting with the wand occasionally i'll miss a little small area and i'll notice this white little white spot and that's what i did here on his leg so i just went in there and uh recaptured that uh color i'll color it in and go ahead and do the normal shading and everything to fill in the spot that I missed. Once we do that, then we can get into the trunks. So now we're gonna get move up to where his trunk is, and also the you know if you're again familiar with the Jack Kirby Thor costume, he has those two light blue circles, uh, kind of where his uh, where I guess what you would call his trunks are at. Uh, so uh, you can barely see one of them here uh, on this particular Kirby drawing. So I'm going ahead and fill on that in. And then I'll do the rest of his trunk because that's a darker blue. The rest of it's in a darker blue uh, than the the circles are on his on his uh, trunks. And uh, if you actually looking at the Kirby drawing, uh, he basically is inked or will have inked, or you know filled in most of the uh, trunk there and in, in black. Uh, but uh, I'm initially going to go ahead and color it blue and then fill in the black after the fact. Uh, wasn't necessary per se to do it, but uh, it's just the, you know, and I like sometimes I can't explain why it is I'll do what I'll do here. But uh, in this case, like I said, I'm just going ahead and following the same procedure that I have with other areas, putting in the shading on these areas. I'll put in the highlights and then I'll go back in after the fact and ink in the section um, that uh, Jack had put <clears throat> in there. So by the time I'm done, I actually look, do just a little bit of this blue that will actually be showing. Uh, but it'll be uh, sh shaded nicely, I'll give it that. Okay, put in some of the highlights. You know, I said, I, it makes me sometimes wonder why I didn't just leave it like that. Uh, but uh, like I said, I t try not to do too much changing per se of what Jack does. I mean, why would anybody? Uh, so now I'm going in and using the curve tool again to capture this little bit uh, on the tights, uh, I mean, excuse me, on his trunks that we're going to fill in in black. while we start drawing on his arm. Okay, so we fill that in black and then we'll bring back our color and there we go. So well, now that we got that established, we'll be thinking about going ahead and drawing the rest of his arm. See, I forgot a few ink lines on the trunk part and also went ahead and added some little extra lines on his leg. Sometimes I think that's a problem I have is sometimes I don't know when to stop. And that's something I probably should learn. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start inking in the arm. Now, 
like I said, when I did this actual, recorded this actual thing, I never realized exactly how long it takes me to do these things. Because uh, the actual Thor drawing from beginning to end actually took over three hours on the recording. Uh, you know, which was, ex you know, no, no one wants to sit through th three hours of that. And, uh, no, I didn't mind it. But then again, I was only doing it 20, 30 minutes at a time. So what I've done here is I've time-lapsed this to kind of speed this up. Uh, and this is going to be just part one of this particular uh, lesson. Uh, so using the time lapse, it was originally out one hour and 12 minutes. Uh, using time lapse, I've cut it down to just a little over 30. So that's a much more tolerable uh, amount of time uh, to show this. Uh, so all I'm doing is just filling in the main areas that uh, will be inked. And then I'm going to lay in the color of the arm. I said I wish I could draw as fast as this thing makes it look like I'm doing with the time lapse, but uh, uh, believe me, it didn't t it didn't go th this quickly. But uh, it's the general gist of what I end up doing uh, for this segment. Okay, so now that I've got the color there right now, I'm going to go in with my uh, pen and fill in the lines that. Uh, need to be filled in. Okay, you just use the uh, paint bucket for that main section and the rest I'm going back to my pen again. And still using the same brush and there we go. Okay, next we'll do the wristband, which is uh, red and black. And do the shading and the highlighting. Now, if you were to be coloring in this drawing yourself, you know, you didn't, you don't have to do all the fancy uh, shading and everything I do. You could just lay it out in flat color, which is actually perhaps maybe a better way to go on uh, Jack's drawings. But uh, uh, for this particular one, I'm following pretty much the same procedure I did on the Grievous one as far as the coloring style, uh, which... Uh, it doesn't look bad. Like I said, it's it's a little fancy for uh, for the way Jack normally would have his drawings colored, but uh, uh, you can bear with me here. Okay, so we're, I'm just doing the outline of the cape with the curve tool again, and again we're time lapsed here, so uh, that's why it seems to be blazing along. So now I select it with the magic wand, and then I'm going to fill in my red. Let's see, I, I, I had to fill in that extra line there because when I tried to do it, I've cut the section off, but when I first tried to color it, it went beyond where it was supposed to go because I left an open spot. Okay, so uh, colored in the cape, and so now we're going to go into the uh, shadow and go ahead and bring the shading in and the highlights in for the cape. Like I said, there's no one way that to do that. I mean, you just once you kind of get used to it, you just make it look how you think it ought to look. Uh, like I said, as per usual, I'm just generally following the lines that uh, Jack laid out here. But uh, like I said, you can't really go wrong following Jack Kirby. Okay, so that basically takes care of the cape. So we add in the rest of the ink lines with the brush. And 
never good. Okay, to give you a quick glimpse of the color without the ink and the all together. So now we're moving on to the hammer. And don't even ask me to try to pronounce the name of the hammer. Uh, Okay, using the still using the curve tool for this. Like I said, sometimes it's a trial and error thing on uh, circles. Now they actually do have a you know an oval tool for the for that. Uh, I sometimes have trouble getting it placed properly, which is why I still just use the curve tool because I just get I seem to get much better control. Uh, now the rest of the lines on the hammer I will add with my pen. But first things first, we're going to end up selecting it and coloring it in. I started out with kind of more of a bluish gray, but I kind of didn't like it. So I went ahead and just brought back to kind of a gun, you know, gunmetal gray. And we'll work with that. So, you know, again, just like usual, following the outside edge for the shadow. And I'll go ahead and throw a three quick lines. Again, we're uh, kind of where Jack had his ink lines across the top of the hammer. Throw in some highlights. Uh, time lapse makes you look like you're really fast. Okay, so I'm going to go in here with my pen and just follow the lines that Jack laid out for me. And I'm pretty much just following what Jack's given me here. Okay, so now uh, the line on the right hand side of the hammer, we're actually going to use a different, another one of the pens that I purchased uh, in the same kit I got the Kalinsky brush. And what it will allow me to do is do some find basic kind of crosshatch lines that I couldn't, you know, regular inkers can do this freehand and make it look perfect. I'm not them. Uh, so that's why I kind of bought these brushes to kind of help me out here. And I'm using that for both the the bottom base of the hammer and the, that top corner. And uh, once you remove the color, you can kind of see what that brush did. And uh, if you get a chance, if you decide you want to mess with those, I said they're not that expensive, but they they really do a great job. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started on his hair. Uh, you know, I used the curve tool on his hair, but I think this is actually a section that I probably could have used the pen uh, to do. And uh, I think basically this, I, this came down to... Uh, Number one, of course, I think because of the uh, handle of the hammer, I wanted to keep a relatively straight line. But uh, again, said so that you know that's your totally your choice of whatever your skill level presents to you. Uh, like I said, when it comes time to doing Thor's face, I'm going to be doing strictly pen because uh, I'm not going to be using the curve tool for that. But for his hair, I can do it. And needless to say that uh, you know when I was doing this, I had it expanded up quite a bit so I could see it I mean because uh, you know as great as the curve tool is sometimes you need to be up a little closer to lay, make sure the lines the lines get laid down where you don't uh, uh, not connect your lines because uh, we've already seen that from the general grievous thing what happens when you try to color something when you haven't completed your line set it just colors everything So we'll lay in the lines for the inside of the cape and his back shoulder. And the stripes on the hammer. Okay, so uh trying to select the hair piece. That's another thing you notice that if I, if I don't click on the correct area, especially when I'm doing ink drawings, 
uh, you select everything. So you end up having to hit control, your wonderful control Z to go back. Okay, so now I went ahead and colored in his blonde hair. And going in there to uh, lay down some shadows, which don't look all that great. It actually looks better once you start adding in some of the highlights. Uh, because the shadow itself was kind of, made it look kind of muddy. Uh, but uh, once you add the highlight in, it's, it's a lot better. Okay, now I'm adding in the ink lines on his hair. And again, that's just back to the brush again with the Polinsky brush. Uh, so we're looking good and we're getting ready to think about doing the face. See, again, you notice I'm, I missed a little part of his hair there as per usual, so I have to go back and uh, recover that. Uh, the plus side is, is that, you know, again, especially with undo or whatever, you can easily go back in there and fix where you missed an area. And just like the regular hair, it looked a little better once you add a little highlight to it. So, all right. Thor is moving right along. Okay, showing you just the ink over the photo blue. Okay, so now I'm coloring in his back shoulder. Laying in the shadows and everything. And the highlights and the and the ink over those sections. Which uh filling in. Again, still on time lapse, so it's uh rolling along a whole lot faster than I normally would be doing it. Okay. Okay, so now working on Thor's hammer handle and fell in the black stripes there. We're going to end up coloring in the handle itself. Uh, so I end up using gray here and I keep thinking that maybe I should have made it more like a wood handle. Uh, but I didn't. I mean, again, I could always go back and rethink that decision. But uh, as for right now, I just went ahead and made it uh, kind of a stone style handle. Now I'm getting in the back interior of his cape, which is probably going to be just relatively dark because it's kind of in the shadows. That's looking pretty good. Kind of bouncing around between the color, the ink. Okay, so now we're going to get into Thor's face. Okay, now this is kind of important. Uh, now... I could have just selected the face and then just laid in flesh tone, but it would have covered up his eyes, would have covered up his mouth. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically kind of boxing out where his eyes and his mouth go. So when I lay the flesh tone down, those things are left alone. Okay, now and now I'm just going in there laying the shadows. And if you look at this, it's going to look, wow, that really looks stupid. 
Uh, but trust me, once we add the ink on his face, all this stuff will kind of make sense and kind of pop a little bit. I know my wife looked at that and think, wow, it really looks kind of crappy, doesn't it? I said, don't worry, trust me, it'll work, it'll work out. Uh, so now I'm going in with my brush and just going ahead and follow, following uh, uh, Jack's lines here. And I'm trying to be re relatively careful. And, and like I said, I've got this blown up pretty good so I can uh, kind of get in there with the details on it. Uh, Okay, I'm just going ahead and filling in the, the rest of the lines on his face. Uh, add a few uh, lines on his bottom lip. I had to get in there and do a little more detail on his eyes, but I keep hitting the, you know, as I've told you before, when you're selecting, if you hit it the wrong way, you're going to select all the ink lines and you have to keep undoing and uh, going back. Okay, so now you see, now when I add that color, that color doesn't look near as bad once the ink's been put in there. So I'm still uh, playing around with his eyes a little bit. But looking pretty good. He's feeling a little more ink around that left eye. And uh, let's go ahead and add uh, some fine ink lines around his eyes. And then I'll add a little highlights here with the white. Yep. Okay, and a couple highlights on his pupils. Be pulling in and out, kind of looking at it from different uh, perspectives. See if I like what it's doing. Now I'm taking that same way I did the eyes and just adding a little bit of highlights around his nose, on his chin. And we're just about going to be reaching a stopping point here for this part of this project. Uh, Like it's coming right along. And I'd say we're just about done here for part one. Now, on the next part, we'll go into uh, completing this project. It's kind of showing you where we're at right now. Uh, that is the completed ink drawing, which is where we're kind of going. And the completed color drawing will be coming up after that. And uh, so the next part, we'll see if we can't finish this up. This is Martin Sexton, and I thank you for being with me. We'll see you next time.